I spoke to some candidates that's um, um, that's running for um, in Plantation, Lauder Hill, Lauderdale Lakes, and there are big a lot of um, development projects that are in the work, particularly in like like um, in that plantation area. They want to build like um, high rises, and and it, and it it's gonna um, and those things um, impact uh, traffic. They um, have they put a strain on like um, St um, Stephen said their sewer system because now you're building you're building up instead of like building wide. So you're putting more people in a smaller amount of, of space. So you're doing, it's like a density thing, right? So that you're putting all of these people in a very small uh, um, neighborhood. And is the, is the city really in a position to take on all of those numbers? And the developers don't care. They just want to build their stuff, sell it, and they move on to the next project. I actually want to add one last thing, and it touches okay. base with that. There is actually, community that I met, um, Tamarack, who was a part of Senate District 33. And mm -hmm. I met a great group of people and they created the Woodlands Defense Fund. It, their community is called the Woodlands. Basically, they are one of the last few open green spaces in Broward County, in Tamarack. I, I, we are almost considered a concrete jungle nowadays in South Florida. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, they created this initiative because, I mean, it's supposed to be a golfing community, but they don't utilize it in that sense. All they're asking for is that the commissioners, which fail to actually allow for a, a public vote on the issue of actually developing on the land. This land is creating a drainage system that is natural. It is allowing a bunch of, uh, of, of a heavily dense um, ecosystem to thrive. I mean, it sustains the life that we expect to see in South Florida. And the fact that it's coming up for a vote in October, I believe it's October 20th. We need to lobby our commissioners. Tamarack failed us. The, the mayor failed us in Tamarack, but we can hold them accountable because right now Broward County Commission is going to plan a rezoning. They are going to vote on rezoning. All the community wants is them to consider the fact that do something we want. Don't put a bunch of apartments next to my house. Put a park, build a school, do something recreational. Keep the land the way it is because that's why we came to Florida. That's all I keep hearing. And I'm just throwing that out there because it's an example that's happening throughout the state and it's happening right here in our own backyard. So, I mean, I don't want to push anything, but I'm letting you guys know every day the environment has an effect and every day we're fighting to keep it because we're losing so much of it. But Let's continue the conversation. So, uh, we're going to let, let Narni come in here because, you know, we're going back and forth because I do want to, I, I want to add something to that whole conversation about development and like some of the consequences of it. But, you know, Narni is here too. She's part of this. And I just want to get, you know, get um, get some of her feedback. But there's also something that, I mean, the residents of Lauderdale, Lauderdale and Lauderdale Lakes and Tamarack need to pay attention to because that's something else that's coming for a vote. And you got to be, you know, you, you got to pay attention to who you're voting for and put it in these seats because they're making decisions about your life <laughs> and, how you um, and just to add on to your story about um, Baker Sandra she also mentioned that the community the historically black community that was being affected by the drainage could not do anything because of redistricting so they were put in a position where they stay somewhere and they have no say in where they live in terms of the so it's very very important that we look at these down ballot candidates you, you it, it's imperative that you look at these ba down ballot candidates because these are the people that make the decisions on, uh, um, for your everyday life, right? So um, before we, we're like at 6.15, so we got 15 more minutes. So I just wanna interject the census um, uh, so we can make sure that people understand. Now, Sandra, you told us last week that there was an extension for the census. We're no longer um, in the deadline for the end of the month. We have an extension to the end of October. Is that correct? Yes, October 31st. So October 31st. So please, please, it's very, very imperative because you know what? The census does uh, affect us in terms of down ballot candidates as well, because I'm going to tie it in, is that we, they're going to, there will be redistricting. Florida has, has gained so many new residents, and this is on a yearly, sometimes weekly, monthly basis. And so with the influx of new people coming into Florida, we will be getting some redistricting going on. And that will mean that we either get more seats or we lose seats. It all depends on how 
how you vote on November, the, um, during early voting and November the 3rd, right? Because right. one of the things that we um, Democrats want to do is to make sure that they, that the Republicans don't get a super majority, because if they do, then it's like they're, you know, they're going to just do whatever it is that they want. And I'm, I'm, and there are a couple of packs. Um, I think um, one is um, House Victory, and there's another pack, I think, called Victory Now. They're trying to help these candidates. Um, it's, it's, um, there's, a under, there's an understanding that they can definitely keep, um, you know, Republicans from having a super majority in the House. And there's some that believe that they, it's possible to flip if we can get all of these um, House um, Democrat candidates elected, right? If we can get them elected, there's a possibility we can even flip the house. And at least, you know, your voice will be heard. Your, your voice will be heard. And, the, and when um, Narnik talks about redistrict, redistrict, redistricting, one of the things they're going to do is vote on that. Like, I've been, I, I, I teach, so I talk all day. So, mm -hmm. like, um, they're going to be voting on where they're going to put these lines, right? And, you know, if it's if it's a Republican legislator, they're going to do it in a way that benefits them. Just like that Black community that no longer have a have a voice, they put that, they, they carve that community into a red area where, like, you know, whatever, even if everybody in that area votes, they still won't get what it is that they're looking for because the way it was re, uh, redistricted. And they're going to do that again. So we need to make sure we get as many blue seats. Um, if we could flip them both, I mean, that would, that, that would be um, absolutely amazing. And so I, I didn't mean to go on this little... No, that's okay. No. So, you know, so we have up until the 31st of October for our census. Um, it's imperative that we uh, make sure we fill this out. Listen, last time I checked, we were at 67% in Broward County in terms of... Um, uh, was it 67%? Yeah, it was 67% um, that we filled out our census. Uh, Broward County is a minority majority county, right? Um, we have a lot of, we have 31 cities. Most of these 31 cities have a majority of people is not diverse. Okay. So it's really, really important that um, we do the census because that brings money that we, money we need for education, uh, you know, for uh, uh, fire department, fire department, police department, all of that is, is built in within this census. You will not be in trouble. You will not get in trouble where if you're, if you're here undocumented, I know a lot of people are concerned about that. We have a lot of immigrants in, in Florida. Uh, just know that that information is not, is not privy to the federal government, even though the uh, occupant of the White House try to make it, but you will not be in trouble. This is something that you, sh you need to fill out. You, there is no penalty for that. We just want to know how many people and who gets to get counted, right? Um, let me give Jeff Holness a shout out because he, he's on here saying hello. Jeff Holness is running for school board of Broward County at large seat. Um, please look up his website and he said he needs money too. So, uh, <laughs> so he's on here. So Jeff Holness is running for um, Broward County school board at, at large seat. Everybody could um, vote for him. Everybody can vote for him. And uh, let's face it, there's no diversity on that school board except for two sprinkled people. And we, we need to make, yeah, if there isn't, there's only two. I'm going to think it's two, but okay. It's only two. It's only two. There, okay. I have there are no men on the school board. That's it. No men on the school board. That's so, it. The dad's perspective is not there. Yeah, there's no diversity, none at all. Um, so just making, yeah, put it out there. Listen, at the end of the day, and I know Steve told me to, Stephen told me to stay away from this, but I'm going to make it, I'm just going to touch on it just a little bit. Um, the Democratic Party needs to do better. Yes. They just need, they just need to do better. Yes. I'm going to leave it as that. Stephen gave me that look. We're going to do better. We're going to do better because now uh, we're going to do better. And, it's, and it, it has been doing better, right? You know that in the 2018, um, the 2018 mid, uh, midterm election, there were so many women, so many people of color that ran, right? And, you know, they started all of these big, um, organizations to help people run because it used to be so hard to do it. And now people, you know, they, they, there's the barrier to entry is, is a lot less. So you have more and more um, women running. You have more and more people of color running and not only are they running they're winning right so we had Cory Bush in um, Missouri that won there's a, a young man in New York that kicked out a dude that been there like 50 years or something yep. crazy like that you know what I mean so we have, a lot of, we have a lot of young people running and that's like that's like important I mean the young ones are coming out the woodwork they're coming out the woodwork and we're so excited that I think AOC just like kind of started a trend because it I mean there was a slew of young people running a slew of I want to add to that Narnique I, I just want to put this out there and this is something that definitely needs to be addressed in the Democratic Party I love everybody's enthusiasm for young people running 
but where were you when we needed you? We need you, not because you like seeing my young, fresh face and everything else that comes in between. We need your support in every respect, from the money to how you support us volunteering to, you know, not little broing us, because we can do right. everything that you guys can too. I, I just have to throw that out there because that's something I've noticed a lot with young races. It's right. either people don't take us serious or they just appreciate the fact that a young person did it. But we need more than appreciation. We need to know that you support yeah. it. During the, during the election cycle, we saw a lot of, oh, you just, you know, you need some experience, but how, is, how are they going to get the experience if they don't get it? Like you need even that though, because I, I have to tell you that when I, because I, I, I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Stephen Meza and Elijah Manley, right, um, before the primaries, and I'm like, well, you're so young, like, what you think you can do, right? And so, and I, and I spoke to a whole bunch of people, and I'm telling you that knowledge base is there, right? So even though he's 21, and I spoke to some other more mature candidates and i'm telling you like it, that age is not what it is it's like what do they know how informed they are on the issues and that type of thing and that's what's important so forget looking at a person's age because you can speak to some of these like i said more mature candidates and you just like you've been doing this for how long and what are you talking about like i don't understand you so don't get don't get stuck on that age and even if they're older and they have been doing it a long time that doesn't mean that they're hip to what's going on that doesn't mean that they're willing to do what the people want, right? Because a lot of times people go in and they have their own agenda. And they're like, I'm going in there because I need this to happen. But that ain't what all them constituents you were talking to said that they want. So, you know, so you, so you you can run into that too. So definitely. And and I and, and I and I agree with them because I'm telling I was one of the one like, but you you in college, like what you mean you finna go run for a <laughs> <Are you serious? laughs> well, tell you when he was running and when Elijah was running they gave their incumbents a run for their money they, they made them set their game up to step up their game and 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 really attack cer certain issues that they weren't dealing with before so it's it's good in a sense but i do wish that the the uh the parties whichever side really kind of be there for the young ones and give them the opportunity because listen you can't sleep on young people when they have the vigor they have the knowledge and they have the stamina to get things done. And so this is what's needed in, in government, period. We don't, we just, we don't have the luxury now for petty and jealousy and hate. We just don't have the luxury. So if you see someone and someone's willing, and it's not easy as a young person to run for office. I had a hard time. And you have a slew of young people running and, and, and taking it and, and taking all the hits and still coming out and being very professional and very direct. And so we need to not sleep on that. Um, but so, Sandra, go ahead and wrap up with what you were saying in terms of uh, t to add on uh, with the uh, down ballot candidates. Um, remember that we have up until October 5th to register to vote in Florida is imperative. If you weren't if you didn't see that debacle last night, you need to go and look that up and see it and all the more push you to register to vote. Because uh, what, the, what the establishment is banking on is that the same old, same old, every election, some people come out, some people don't come out. You can always count on your super voters. And then you have the rest who like, ah, oh, my vote doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you need to vote like your life depends on it because it literally does. We and need some so Obama 2008 right now. We need Obama 2008 type. That's right I'm telling you, we need Obama 2008 turnout right now. Um, so I, w I wanted to add to the point, because this is about the down battle calories, about what um, Stephen was talking about, about that community in Tamarack. So t I think Tamarack is like, is it connected to Lauder Hill or Lauderdale Lakes or both? Um, um, it is connected to Lauder Hill. Lauder Hill. So there's actually, um, there. so I'm, um, there's a bunch of candidates running for all, for three of the seats, um, commission seats in Lauder Hill, right? And one of the things that they're going to have to deal with is because they're trying to do this development in Tamarack, they're trying to open up one of the streets. I think it's like 64th <laughs> Avenue or something like that. Is that what it is? Yes. And what actually happened was Lauder Hill found historical records that told Tamarack, you need to get out of our side of town. <laughs> <laughs> Be able to do it, but that was something. That's something that came up, right? And a lot of people won't notice, right? Like you brought, and and I had spoken to someone that's running for uh, for a seat in Oakland Park, and they had lived on the street. And I told this story last week. They lived on the street that was closed off. Next thing you know, they're bulldozing. And she like, what was going on? Went to the commission, me like, oh, we voted on that like the last time. It's too late, right? So that was one of the things.
things that I know, like from that I learned from one of the forums that they were they were trying to open up this street. And it's like if you have the wrong people on the commission, they may allow these things to happen. But if you have people who just like, or if you're if you're informed and you don't want that to happen and you participate and be like, listen, y'all gotta find a way to fix this. If that means you gotta hire an attorney or whoever, but luckily, but that was definitely one of the things that came up that they wanted to do some development and, and even like and, and, and imagine that something that's happening in one city can affect your city right so you really need to be informed and you want to make sure you put people in office that's paying attention to this thing that's going to be aware of all of these issues that are happening i just want to put this out there because i believe if we want to hold people accountable we need to call them out so i just want to say michelle gomez julie fishman um, I forgot the other person's name. I don't, I don't think she ran anymore. Nonetheless, those two, Michelle Gomez has an interest in this project. For some reason, the realtors say that she's getting money behind the scenes and they're not building anything behind her house. Julie Fishman, I completely love and support you because you are progressive, but I am so sad that you denied the vote of the public. It was literally only Mike Gillen and Marlon Bolton who allowed, for, who actually voted yes for a public comment and vote to decide if they can, should continue with the rezoning and development. That is what I, I wanna just put that out there. If you are upset about this, those are the people you need to hold accountable. You need to call Michelle Gomez, you need to vote her out, you need to figure out a plan to know what you want next time around. But I just wanna put that out there because it's a sad travesty to know that we are losing the last little bit of land we have in Broward County. Everything around us is concrete and we need everything we have left. Just wanted to put that out there. That's what I'm talking about. You see how the young ones, they savages, honey. They just come out and say, I'm calling names. Name and names, doggone it. Okay? Michelle, Julia, you don't put you on front street. What's going on? What's, what you doing? What's going on? What's going on? I had some different beef with Tamarack uh, because they didn't want to. They didn't want to put a, um, you know, um, um, uh, um, Jelen, Commissioner Jelen had proposed that they make a Black Lives Matter statement, and they voted against it. They were just like, "We're not doing that." And you, I mean, and I'm gonna call out Marlon Bolton on that one too. I mean, he has a he has a candidate. He has um, someone that's running against him, and I did have the pleasure of um, speaking with um, Chef Michelle Jones, but I can't, you know. I, I'm not here to tell people who to vote for in those cities because I don't live in Tamarack, so I don't, you know, I don't know what the people in Tamarack need. But we did, we did um, interview her. Her uh, video is on the um, Democrat Women's Club Facebook page. We also have a YouTube channel, so subscribe. And I think we want you to like the videos. My brother's telling me, like, I need to promote it. So the Democrat Women Club, um, Greater Broward has a YouTube channel. You can go and check out her video and see if, you know, if she's one of the candidates that you want to vote for. But Chef Michelle Jones did come talk to us, and I know she's running against Marlon Bolton. So I, you know, so I'm glad Marlon um, voted for that to put into the people, but I know um, he didn't, he voted against um, having a Black Lives Matter statement be made. And it was just a resolution. It's just a resolution for the city like you know uh, and and my thing is is that you know black lives matter just because it, you know now it's trying to get you know people trying to give it a ne negative connotation which which is which is sad but okay but the, at the end of the day black lives do matter and so as a black man right you all you're doing is a resolution we're not making laws here we're just making resolutions okay not even an ordinance <laughs> It's not even an ordinance. Thanks. It's like so to for for you to vote that down is a is a problem. It's problematic, and it's good that um, I moving forward. That's what we need to do. One thing we learned from the commander in Orange Commander or whatever you want to call him. Um, he called people out on a regular basis, right? He called people by name on a regular basis, and that's what we need to do. Point blank. Period. There's no more sugar. We don't have the luxury to do that anymore. And it's important that people know your, your, your commissioners, your mayors, these are the people that make decisions for your everyday lives and how dare they make a decision and not ask you if it's okay. These are public servants, right? Like Joe, Je Jennifer Perlman said, they're being insubordinate by making sure that they dismiss you completely from the process. You live in this city, right? Um, and it's important that you get a say in what goes on in your city. So, you know, if, if that's what's going on there, shame on them really and truly. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a shout out to another candidate, um, down ballot candidate, Nadia Assad. She's running for a lot of hell commission C3. And I'm telling you, um, she has some competitors in her race, but she's always there. I mean, she's been doing this for like, I, I mean, I met her like um, early last year and I'm telling you, she's been at everything. She does food drive, book pack, back, 
um, the backpack. I did a Christmas thing with Sunrise ARC. She participated in that. She's come and spoken to us on several occasions. You call her, she's there. Um, she was doing some stuff last week. And I know she has a couple of guys in her race, some of them popular, some of them not. You know what I mean? And don't make this a popularity contest. Like really don't make this a popularity contest. Vote for the person that's putting in that work and that's going to do what it is that, you know, um, that what the people in the residents of that city want. So I have to give a shout out to Nadia Assad. She's running for Lauder Hill Commission C3. I'm almost sure that's what it is, right? Nadia Assad, she came and she spoke to us since we talked about Lauder Hill. Um, I did speak to, I only spoke to one of the people that's running in Lauderdale Lakes. I had a, a um, something scheduled and the other person wasn't, um, um, wasn't um, able to come, but I, I did get to speak to Sandra Davey. She's running for a seat in Lauderdale mm -hmm. Lakes, you know, support that candidacy. Um, we, um, we have um, Gracia Riva Smith. She's running for a commission seat in Oakland Park. She's come and, um, you know, you don't want to say friend of the show, but she's friend of the show. She's friend of the page. She's friend of the club. And she has like some really good things that she's doing because those are nonpartisan races, right? So it's a nonpartisan race. And I, and I think she even had to come out a couple of days ago and put out a video because people were talking, you know, trying to say, well, what are you a Republican or a Democrat? But it's a nonpartisan race because the person is there to do the work for the people, for the residents of their city, right? So we got Grace Hill Reba Smith in um, Oakland Park, Nadia Saad, Lauder Hill, C3. Sandra Davey came and spoke to her. She's running for Lauder, Lauderdale Lakes um, um, Commission seat. Um, so, you know, um, all that, you know, um, I talked about the one in, in Tamarack. So some, some other house seats, I'm gonna call out a few more house seats, just so people, if they got money, they got time, because I'm telling you that money is good, but also that time is important. If you could get on the phone and call someone, send a text message, wear a shirt, put their name and their link on your social media page, all of that's going to help. So I'm going to run down a few more. So we have District um, 21. I, I talked about her. That's Kaiser Enna, Enna King in the Gainesville area. Um, she was part of that panel with um, Pasha Baker. Then we have District 20, 26, Patrick Javon Henry. Um, he's out in the 386 area code. Don't give me the line about telling you exactly where that is. Stephen is going to keep me honest and tell me where it is. We have Tracy Kagan. Um, House District 29, that's near the Orlando area also. Andrew, Andrew learned, learned it. He's um, House Dis District 59, and then he's in the Tampa area, that 813. We have a Julie Jenkins, that's in that same area too. Um, that's House District 60. Uh, who else we have? We have, we talked about her, her. Um, there's a, a young man in um, Palm, uh, West Palm, James Bonfiglio, that's House District um, 89. You know, um, and then the set, the two sentences that we're promoting is Javier Fernandez. Um, he's uh, running against the person that used to represent me in 105, I think Anna Maria something. And then we have Patricia Sigmund. She's also running for uh, Senate seat. They need money. They need time. And the last person I'm going to shout out is also out of Miami, House Di District 110, um, Annette Colazzo, right? We need to um, support these candidates. We need to support these candidates. Give them money, $5, $10, $25. Um, I'm going to put up a list. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to put up their information, their uh, donation links, and their names on the page. Um, give them a few dollars. Give them some time. Reach out to them. Um, because we, yesterday, if it did nothing else, it gave us this sense of urgency, which we should have already had, but it really gave us a sense of urgency because say people are foolish enough to have this guy reelected, we at least need people in our state that's gonna protect us, right? You know, this is that time where you're gonna need a middleman to just kind of buffer us from the nonsense, right? We're gonna need somebody to buffer us from the nonsense. So please, please um, support, vote blue all the way down, vote him out, vote blue, Split Florida. We really are a purple state. We can actually do this. We need that Obama 2008 type turnout. That's what we need. That's what we need. And we can do this. Our lives depend on it. And then whoever else is seeing this and whoever has an opportunity to see this entire video, if you are thinking about running, I be, I, oh, I'm almost begging, I behoove you all to really, really seriously consider it. Because, uh, this establishment needs a, a change up and by bringing in someone who has no political background to run the country, we can see how that can be completely detrimental to all of us. However, we do see that he had galvanized a group of people that not otherwise would never have made an effort to be part of the political process. And so what we've learned, if 
for me, what I've learned, if I've never learned anything is that no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're doing, if you have a passion and you have determination, you can run for office. And so I, you know, I encourage people, um, if you, if you've been doing things in the neighborhood and you've been doing things within your, your, your realm of, um, your business and and you've always been that person to push things and push the envelope and get things done i encourage you to run for office um it's not an easy thing however it's a it is a fulfilling thing to make sure that everyone around you um, and your community gets the best that they deserve and so um you know i hope steven is this is not the last time he runs i want to see him on a ballot again in two years um, I'm hoping Sandra would consider Bush Canada was like, uh, um, nah, I ain't doing all that. I, I listen, I would have told that man to more than shut up, man. I'd have been like, use this all kind of profanities. Y'all would have heard a big old long bleep. <laughs> all of a sudden, it'd have been like, bleep, <laughs> right? And they'd be like, yeah, ain't no other debate with this old crazy woman. Nah, I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm real supportive. I got your back. You want to do it? Tell me what you need, and I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to do it for you. That's so what I encourage everyone to do so. And I encourage you, we listen, we only have a few more days to October 5th. Please register to vote. The other thing is please do the census. It takes literally 10 minutes, 10 questions, 10 minutes, get that survey done, get that information in there and let's make Broward become 100% counted because bottom line is I didn't realize until I started running how much it takes to run this County. This County is huge. Um, just the school board budget alone is $5 billion. Can you think about, you know, let's look at things in a in bigger perspective. So, um, and we need much really, 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 really need much needed funds that we don't have currently. And I want people to get, I want Broward County to get what they deserve and what they need. Um, and we, we become a Mecca somehow. Um, and it's important that we talk about that. And next week we're going to still, you know, continue on with that, but the climate, uh, change that Stephen is talking about too. People don't realize this is the earth that we live in and we have to take care of her. We don't take care of her. Where do we go? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> it's like, there's nowhere to go. Mars. <laughs> there's nowhere to go, girl. That's Mars is just a fantasy, but there's nowhere to go. Um, and so it's really, space for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important that we take care of this earth. I mean, this is, this is what it is. And I'm pretty sure people in California are starting to pay attention. I'm pretty sure people in, uh, you know, there was, you know, we had the California, the fires, we oh, had, fire. it's, it's, listen, these are not, this is not something that, these are not anomalies, right? This is, this is a buildup. And so I'm, I'm going to interrupt you on that one. Cause remember that was the one thing the president did talk about last night, right? Cause yeah. they were trying to get him to talk about climate change and he was blaming the forestry department on the fact that, you know, the place is burning down. He's like, well, if you get a better forestry department, this wouldn't happen. And he's blaming California cause they have a democratic government, which most, for, most of those lands are held by um, the federal government are responsible for them. So that's another thing he didn't know, but he was like, oh, if you have a better forestry department, then you ain't got to worry about California you're being on fire. I mean, this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, and no, I just want to... Stephen question, uh, Stephen point to make, because he's an environmental I person. I want to highlight this one thing. I don't think Floridians will truly take this serious until we have another Wilma, until we have another Irma. I mean, St. Petersburg uh, was devastated, <laughs> and it took a, that area yeah. years, and they are still recovering now. What about and, Michael on the panhandle? Remember, Michael was a Cat 5 that hit the panhandle yeah. years ago, too. I mean, these things matter. And I mean, I know we've been pretty lucky. We've gotten some curveballs, but I mean, it's going to happen. It, it's almost around the time. I think we're due for one. And I, I don't, I'm not wishing for it, but I, it's going to happen. And I mean, even uh, Jared Moskowitz said it. None of our building codes are up to standards to handle a hurricane of the magnitudes that climate change is, you know, basically giving birth to. And until we change those things, until we take it seriously and address all the facets that allow us to address climate change, we're not ready. And we have- Because remember the Bahamas last year, they had Dorian that was a cat five that stayed, it was a slow moving cat five that stayed on that island for like 24 hours and totally destroyed it, right? So yeah, this, this stuff is real. You know, we got lucky that we didn't get any part of that, but it was devastating. I think they just stopped counting people that died in that storm, like they, you know, We'll never know the real number of how many people lost their life um, during that particular storm. So yeah, we definitely um, need to, you know, have to do better. Have to do better. 
So I, this was great, uh, Steve. I, I loved it. I loved everything you said. I hope that we can um, do this again, um, just to reiterate, you know, um, the importance of climate change. Um, and, you know, we're going to do another, you know, another series next week um, and invite Ruby, Ruby Lenore Green, who was supposed to be our public defender, um, but she has since moved on to state attorney and we're excited about her. And um, we're hoping that we can confirm Gillen to come on and have a conversation. Um, I'm hoping we can get him to do that. But it's important that we do these weekly as we draw near to the election and so people can see. We'll see how it goes with the debate with our, you know, our vice presidents uh, next week. So see how that goes. I'm really interested. I don't want to hype myself up to get upset. So like, it, I'm just- Yeah, but it won't be what we saw yesterday. Okay. It won't be okay. what we saw. It might, it, might be, it, might be, it might be boring, but it ain't, it, it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be all that heat, all that fire, all that spice it won't happen. Okay. We'll see that from those two. We'll see how that goes. But uh, keep pushing everyone. Um, remember, register the vote. Uh, remember, look up your candidates. You have opportunities now. Look it up on your phone. Look at their platforms. Looking at their platform doesn't mean that you support them. It just means that you're looking up information um, and learn about your candidates. You yeah. know, and like Stephen said, this is not about two of, of two lesser evils. This is not about picking your poison. It's either you. It's this is what it is. And you know, we have to look at it that way. It's not, you know, he's this and, and it's, that's not what it is. That's not what, it, that's not what we're trying to promote. That's not what it is. You need to make informed decisions. So just look it up, just glaze through. You don't have to read through everything. Cause you know, some people don't have platforms. They just gotta give you their phone numbers, right? So if there's something that you want to know, um, call them, right? And if they're not willing to give you their number, Holler at the person who will, right? Because if they're going <laughs> to give you your number to talk to you, like, well, why I can't have your number? Everybody else give me their number because I got questions, right? You got, you need some answers. If they're willing, they need to give you that number. Or on their website, they allow you to send me emails. But uh, like nowadays, a lot of the candidates are giving you their number, their phone number. Because we um actually spoke, I spoke to two of the commission people that are running for commission in Sunrise, like Ernstie De Mornay and also Jacqueline Guzman. Um, they both came on, very good candidates. I mean, really in <laughs> in their in both of their cities um they, they gave out their phone numbers like yo you got a question is something you want to know give me a call and, and i'll answer that question for you so that should be something that we should expect they should make themselves available and don't don't get caught up by the ones that make themselves available when they're trying to run and as soon as they get that seat you don't hear from them again until it's election time so you know don't fall for that for that okie doke either you know but Everybody close out, have your final words, final thoughts, and then, um, you know, go ahead, Stephen, what's your, what's, what are your final thoughts uh, for, for this segment, and what do you want to tell the people? Have a plan for Election Day. Have, have 10 friends you're thinking of, text family members, give a few rides out if you can, um, carpool if you need to, to the polls. If you have your mail-in ballot, make sure you drop it off at the Supervisor of Election Office. Don't let anything stop your vote from counting, and... I'm just gonna say this. I will see you guys on the ballot in 2024. I'm looking forward to that. So. 2022. You gonna wait? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right back for the Senate. <laughs> okay. All right then. Okay. We we right we right here with you. We right here with you. Get that seat. Awesome. All right. Just like Stephen said, have a plan. If you have your stuff early, I got my ballot already. I'm filling it out and I'm dropping it off at the supervisor of elections office. I am not. I am not trying to wait for the mailman to get it and mail it up. I am taking it over there. And I believe that some early voting sites will allow you to drop them off. I believe so in, uh, in early voting. Early voting starts October 20th. 19th. It's 19th. A, so, it's, so in the state, it starts October 19th until November 1st because it's a two-week period before the election, right? So each county may be a little bit different. So it's October 19th to November, um, to November the 1st. So check with your county. Um, your, in Broward, it's BrowardSOE.org, and they'll have the dates. Somebody told me it's the 24th. I'm not sure if that's um, correct, um, but I, um, I know the actual vote, um, early voting period is October 19th through the um, 1st. And um, in terms of like vote by mail, what they're saying is that if you are going to vote by mail and you want to put it in a mailbox, do it before October October the 17th. Once October the 17th come here, no, you need to wait till the early voting sites are open, or open and drop them off at the early voting site. Or if you go to one of the sites and the line isn't long, just kind of go inside and vote. But if you're going to early vote and if you're going to vote by mail, um, do it wait, um, send it off before October the 17th. 
to get right. to Many of them have come in already. And so I, you know, behoove and, and pray that you guys will go ahead and send out your stuff. Make sure you read the amendments. They're a little tricky this year. <laughs> Pay attention. Everyone, we're encouraged. We're gonna, we're gonna have a show on it. We're just telling everyone to vote for Amendment Two because that's the one that deals with minimum wage. That's the only one we want you to say yes to. All the rest of that is foolishness. Say no, 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 no to everything else. Like for real, the only one to say yes to is the one that's gonna uh, allow fifteen dollars of minimum wage. We won't get it. It won't be fifteen dollars until about twenty twenty six, but it'll go up to ten dollars. I think like within next year, and then they'll add a dollar every year until it gets to. $15 in 2026, and then it'll be cost of living adjustments at that particular point, right? So right. yes to no, for two and no to all the rest of that stuff. Because if you read it, you still ain't going to understand it because they don't want you to understand what it's saying, right? Okay, so yes to number um, to amendment two and no to all the other ones. Okay, and so my final thing, Sandra, you just we we tag team in our final our final stuff. Okay, so we we're we're, we're going to make sure we do all of that. And listen, look out for our next one next week. Just know that, um, uh, don't forget Steven's face. We want to see him in 2024. Um, this time around, we're going to make sure and guarantee him that seat because we can't, we can't afford not to have someone like him representing us because this, he knows what the life of a servant is. What he's doing is coming to serve. He's not here for special interest. He's here to serve. So don't forget this boy's face, this young kid's face. This kid is going to make waves in the Senate, and that's what we want. That's what we're looking I'll be, for. I'll be able to say, I knew him when. when. <laughs> yep, yep. We're going to say, we knew him when he was trying, and they didn't want to give that little baby no chance, but look at him now, Lord. Look at him now. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> so right. we're excited about that. All right, so Sandra, send us, you know, take us home. So all I'm going to say, 2020census.gov, complete the census, because uh, um, all these areas need this money, right? You go, We're going to vote blue. We're going to vote him out, right? We're going to go, we're going to vote blue down the ballot, right? Because we, we don't got no time to play. We're only voting for people that's ready day one, not one day. We're not here about talking anymore. It's all about action. Find out what that person, um, first person's about. Pay attention to your um, city commission seats, your city council seats. Um, there's a mayoral race in Miami, Dade County. My mama lives in Miami. There's a mayoral race in Miami, Dade County, right? Daniela Cava is the Daniela only option. Cava. Okay, let me tell y'all something. Don't get don't get caught up in that foolishness with that other dude running for office, right? He he talk he sounds real good when he's talking, but nah, his heart's not good. So it's Daniela Cava all day for the mayor of Miami. Don't get it, don't get it twisted and don't get caught up in the foolishness. All right. So those are my that's gonna be my, my, my thing for the day. You gotta pay attention to these seats. These people are making decisions about your life and you need to know it. So I, I had to shout out Daniela Cava. That's what I'm in it with today, mayor uh, from Miami. Okay. All right. All well, right. thank you, Stephen, so much for your time. And I know it's very, uh, in, you know, important to you. And we really appreciate you giving us some time today. Um, we look forward to you. Uh, Stephen and I and Sandra and a couple of other people have a lot of things working in the works. So you'll see us again. Um, and we look forward to helping everyone as we go through this election season. Um, but don't, you know, don't sleep on us because, you know, we got some things working and, you know, the goal is to make sure that we're fair. I know things can't be equitable the way we want them to be, but we're going to work towards that, okay? So look at her. She's like, they won't be, no, they won't be equal, but they will be equitable. We're going to be equitable, right? Because people always think that like everybody got to get the same thing. No, everybody don't need the same thing. We're going to give them what they need, right? It's going to be equitable. It just yeah. may not be equal, but it'll definitely be equitable. And we're going to do this. All right. So see you guys next week, same time, same place, to, to uh, the two different people. Um, Odd was supposed to be on. She texted me while we were there, but it was like towards the end anyway, so I was like, it didn't make sense. But we'll try to see if we can get her on next week. She is the uh, census guru, so it would, be, it would be good to get her input on where we at with the census in Broward County. All right, so good night, everyone. We went over about 10 minutes, but it's all good, and we thank you so much for your time.